not a Ferrari, not a Lamborghini, not a Porsche, but a long, deep drive with a Maserati on this week's Pensado Place. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Pensado, Pensado's Place. I'm Dave Pensado. This is episode four, right, Herm? Episode four it is. Man, I'm so excited. Man, can't thank you guys enough for all the support, all the uh, comments on the Internet. I actually do have someone read them all to me. <laughs> and um, I'm here with my co-host, Herb Trawick. How are you, man? Man, I'll tell you what, Herb, we're just blowing up all over the Internet. Well, it's in a good way, I hope. Bill collectors mostly, but yeah, <laughs> right. Exactly. The show's doing good too. <laughs> good. Well, speaking of that, make sure that you reach out to us. The number of ways you can get to us: our Twitter handle is at Pensado Place. Email is Pensado Place at thisweekend.com. Um, we've got Zan Nakari over in our corner office, which we call our chat room, which is powered by Ustream. Zan, what's hey, going on over there, pal? I've got. I mean, the the chat's on fire today. Cool. We already have like sheets full of questions. Has uh, has Matt from England hit us yet? Yes, he has. All he's, right, uh, he's in the chat Matt. right now. Cool, cool. So what we're going to do is, um, when we get to our corner office section, we want you to fill that up, and um, you're already doing that. We'll get to those. We're going to make that an actually extended version uh, this week, so uh, we can drill down a little bit farther because that's been one of your requests. And also, you know, you can hit us at our at the this weekend YouTube channel, so you can find us at any one of those. Correct it? What we got on the show this week? I was thinking we need to find places where you can find the show that are easier to say. We got, we, all our places are tongue twisters, you know. <laughs> well, and I, I have to twist my tongue, so <laughs> you get the cool part. But you're Canadian. You're supposed well, to speak I, English. I am Canadian. Hey, Canada. Uh, cool. Montreal. Man, all kidding aside, I'm really excited this week. I say that every week, and this week I truly mean it again. But um, one of the reasons I decided to take this this on. It's, it's something I probably didn't need in my life at this time, but it was something I really wanted to do. And one of the reasons I wanted to do it was to be able to hang out with my buddies and have an excuse to meet them because they're all working so much. And this gives me a great excuse to meet them. And, and, and at the top of that list is my friend, Tony Maserati. Uh, if we had a live audience, there'd be applause right here, Herb. We'd have to wait like 10 minutes for him. There he is, Tony. Tony, Yay. Antonio, Antonio. Okay. Um, Tony and I go uh, a way back as friends, and then uh, I've admired his, admired his work for a long time. I've stolen so many good ideas from Tony's records, I feel I should give him a commission, so this is partly a payback for that. <laughs> Tony, uh, one, of my, one of my favorite things you ever did was One More Chance by Biggie. I loved uh, Where Is the Love, Black Eyed Peas, uh, Crazy in Love, Beyonce, the Rich Harris. I just ran, we, I saw you last week at NAMM, and Rich was there. Yeah. Cra amazing. Uh, 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 uh. Uh, Bootylicious, Destiny's, yeah. uh, She Bangs, Ricky Martin, yeah. uh, I Need to Know, uh, uh, Mark Anthony, being Spanish, I, I, I love Mark Anthony. Nobody can stretch a song to five days like Mark Anthony can in the vamp. <laughs> I love his work. He's just amazing. And then, and then a lot of people don't know about some of the rock stuff you do. We'll get into that a little later on the show. Sure. And then, oh, Jason Mraz, you did, uh, what was the Jason Mraz song you did? Uh, I did Lucky. I did actually the whole album, uh, wow. including uh, I'm Yours and, and everything that, that was on the last uh, We Sing, We Steal Things record. We Sing, We Dance, We Steal Things was That's the name of the album. Who wrote that? I love that song. Uh, Jason did. He did? Yeah. He's a pretty good writer? Very, very good. Yeah. Wow. Uh, He's a terrific writer and, and quite an amazing vocalist as well. One of the things that I've always admired about you is you've never been afraid to embrace new technology, yeah. which is not that unusual, but what is unusual is, is the, is the, the uh, enthusiasm with which you do it and then the way you combine that with, with a tried and true existing technology and techniques that have proven to make hit records all along. How do you balance? I think I'm good at that, but you're probably well, the poster child for that. You know, I, I think probably like you, I, I spend a lot of time talking to my colleagues. What are you using? What are you doing? What, 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 I do do that too. What's new? What's interesting? You know, I mean, we'll talk on the phone. You'll say, I've got this thing. Here, call this guy, and he'll, uh, uh, he'll tell you all about it and show you where to get it. Um, I do that, and um, 
And I think that, the, you know, I started embracing uh, more modern uh, mixing techniques, mm -hmm. uh, probably about... Uh, more modern meaning what? Well, using, using the DAW as, uh, as my automation system. Um, and, and the control surfaces that come with it as my automation, my main automation system. Uh, using uh, hardware inserts mm -hmm. as, uh, as a way to get to the analog world. Yeah, I, I recently, several of my friends, uh, Jason Dillon, have, have hit me to hardware inserts. Yeah. Uh, that's a great way to work. Can we save that for a minute and then we'll go of into course. that in a little more detail? Yeah. Um, but, um, in, uh, what what what, do you, what what should we call like the studios that we have that aren't big studios? I, I asked Dylan this last week, and he said just call them project studios. You know, if it's in your home, don't call it your home studio. Call it your project studio. What do you call your studio? Because you have an, a really nice facility here in L. A. Yeah. Which, by the way, a lot of a lot of people don't know that uh, Tony lives in L. A. Now and. Uh, uh, if you need to find him, you can still find him through all the regular sources, through Duffy and, <laughs> and all those other sources. But uh, if you're in certain parts of town, look out for him. He's here now. He's part of uh, yeah. part of the scene, That's part right. of the... Uh, working out in North Hollywood. And, uh, mm -hmm. I, you know, I, I think I, I've been calling it a, a, a hybrid system, a hybrid mm -hmm. studio, because it, it's not centered around a, a large format analog console. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's, it, you know, I've still got all the analog gear that I've been carrying around for, uh, it's too many years I, I want to mention, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, I mean, those, those, those racks of gear that I used to carry from New York to L.A. Yeah. all the time. Um, but, but it's certainly Project Studio Works or, or Hybrid Studio or, or uh, uh, Mix Room, okay. I guess, I don't know. Um, How can I phrase this question? One of the things I've always been curious about, uh, when when uh, when you started out, it was like probably, and I don't want to anger anyone, uh, send your cards and letters to Zan Nakari. Um, <laughs> but that had to be one of the most exciting times in, in music ever. I mean, that, that would have to rate with the British invasion with both both British invasions I, I mean I, yeah. and and uh, I didn't say the most but one it, it was a pretty exciting time you you got to work with Puffy early on oh, you, yeah. you you worked with Biggie yeah. uh, all of the all of that foundation upon which a lot of modern music is made today when you were living it did did you know it was important at the time you know I I'd, I'd like to say I did but but as you know when you're when you're working you know, anywhere from uh, 16 to 20 something hours a day. Yeah, it's a big blur. You catch that big, 20 something hours a day. It's a big blur. But, 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 I knew that I was in the middle of something that, that, you know, I translated as rock and roll. I translated as the, the lifestyle of rock and roll. I translated it as the energy of rock and roll. You know, it it later became called you know hip hop, mm -hmm. but but to me it was the energy of it. You know, it, I mean I'm sure you know this. When, when we went into the studio at night to work, um, there were. I don't think I was ever without 10 people in my oh, room. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. I, I did a session you know. one time with 100 people in the control yeah. room. And, and, and just the, the you know, I, the idea of, of changing that dynamic, I never thought that that was a good idea. I mm. actually fed off of that I dynamic so that was in the, the room. The energy that's in the room. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, and it's in the mixes that I do. What, exactly. like, like, there's a lot of young engineers that watch the show, a lot of producers that want to be better engineers. Of the techniques that you used back then, now we have different processes, different tools available. What techniques have you found trump the modern techniques? What, is there any techniques back then that, and I know it's an incredibly broad question, mm -hmm. so if, if I've put you on the spot, I apologize. But what, what I'm trying to get at is, is sometimes the young cats are like, man, I, I can't make records like Tony Maserati because all I've got is an LE system and this and that and the other. But uh, yeah. What techniques back then are you still using now that you can actually improve on because of the modern technology that can yeah. give that, that person watching us that doesn't have access to a Larrabee or mm -hmm. a, 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 
a record plant, whatever. It, it's, it's a very good point. Actually, I, I still use, there are several techniques. Um, you know, uh, as you well know, we, we had to stick a lot of low end yeah. into, our, into our work yeah. while still having a nice, you know, present vocal. And clear. Yeah. And, and to get those things to happen, I spent a lot of time learning and understanding compression and compression, frequency sensitive compression. And, um, wow. you know, of course well, in now... the plug-in world, that's a piece of cake now, Well, right? it, it is a piece of cake, but I still do it the way that I did it, mm. you know, those you're, many you're, years ago good. by separating the... by doing a duplicate of the track, which is what, you know, yeah. back in the day we used to just send parallel it to a different... Basically. Well, yeah, parallel compression, but equalizing into that compressor. Oh, on the side chain. So that, um, you know, if I want more... Uh, uh, um, snap or, or or whack on the kick, um, taking out the bottom and, and really focusing uh, my slow attack compressor on the mid range and and you know that that in those areas and but adding the lower frequency oh. less compressed so that I get the the hit oh, and amazing. the bottom. I always thought that you New York guys were just rolling off top end and going home, but it was actually more complex than that back in those days. That, On the kick drum, I'm talking about. That's the way I, I've done it for many years, uh, back a very, very long time ago, because, as I said, it was always, it's like a math problem. How do I fit that low end in, still get a punch, and then and then leave some room for that, that, uh, the, the mid-range stuff and the vocals up top? In terms of uh, vocals, um, how did you treat, like say, like say Biggie, you know, a song? Uh, how how would you treat Biggie's vocals differently than than you would say the vocals you did on uh, "I Need to Know" or the vocals you did on "Crazy in Love"? Do you approach rap rap vocals differently than pop? Differently than than other genres? Or or I a good sounding vocal is a good sounding vocal and in terms of your plug-in line, is, is that a shortcut to any of these techniques? I mean, is that something that, that can save me time, just pulling up your plug-in mm -hmm. and automatically get access to your thought process of how you do vocals? Well, I can't say that you, you'll get access to my thought process because it's hidden behind the plug-in. Mm -hmm. um, but, but the techniques that I use are in those plug-ins. And, I, and to answer the question, do I, do I treat rap vocals different than, than singing, I actually don't. Um, I, I, I'm glad you I, said that, because I don't either. Yeah, I think of them as energy in the same way. Mm -hmm. They're, they're going to carry the track in a certain way, uh, emotionally what they're about. Mm -hmm. I, I treat them differently, of course, effect-wise, mm -hmm. whether yeah. or not they've got a yeah. reverb or a delay on them, but that's yeah. obvious. And that, that's, that's like... The, uh, Effects are like uh, hairstyles. They they yeah. they change every five five to six or seven years. Yeah, it, it's fun pulling back some of the old ones. You know, I know. Um, uh, you know, uh, um, yeah, just just pulling in like an old idea yeah. um, and uh, throwing an old effect on something. I was quite, I was thinking the fun. other day, effects in in music are like cell phones and videos. You can pretty much date a video yeah. by the cell phone. Yeah, it's a, you can pretty yeah. much date uh, a song by the, by the effects and the amount of effects. And, and getting to that point, yeah. it seems to me that right now we're, we're using a lot more delays, a lot yeah. more uh, quarter note, eighth note delays, a lot less slap delays, and we're using like the Bracasti reverb, which is one of my favorite reverbs. Yeah, we're using a lot more reverbs. Uh, some of the, like, some of the uh, reverbs I love are true verb, uh, revolver. Mm -hmm. Those reverbs are, are pretty amazing now. It's just it, sometimes it, 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 I, I wish I had been starting now. There's just so many more options to yeah. because the way you work, if I'm guessing correctly, is you don't go to a plug-in, audition 200 presets and find the one you like. You get the sound in your head Mm -hmm. And then you go straight to a source to help you get that sound, and that source can be a plug-in. It can be analog, and so you you use all 52 cards in the deck. And this is the greatest time ever to have 52 cards because when we started, you and I only had about 20 cards. <laughs> I was going to say four. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it might have been 12. Yeah. But, uh, but I'm gonna stop Tony for a second here because the point of this show is is to 
impart information that 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 may or may not be true, but that's not the point. The point is that we have fun giving it to you, and hopefully it'll help you. But um, there's no substitute for just doing it. You can watch all the Michael Jordan videos you want, run out to the backyard, and you're still going to suck compared to Michael. <laughs> the things you learn here are not to save you the 30 years or 40 years or 10 or 15 years that, that people have put into getting engineering skills, but it's to save you a part of that time and, and help expedite your rise to stardom and success in, in whatever area of the audio field you want. But we can save you a little time, but we can't, we can't make you Tony Maserati tomorrow. But uh, having said that, keep your cards and letters coming. I'm listening anyway. I know some of you guys want one 30, 35-hour show, but uh, we're trying to disseminate to you information that, that, that we found usable in, in creating the hits that we've created and hopefully you can find some use for that. But uh, when, when we were talking about uh, having you come on the show, um, you mentioned something to me that you were excited about, and I was intrigued uh, uh, because it, initially it sounded to me like, like um, I don't know, you're getting nervous. God, what is he going to ask me? <laughs> It's not personal, don't worry. <laughs> well, I, but you I, said I don't something know if there's a joke involved either. <laughs> no that might joke, be no, well. <laughs> no. I've, I've been thinking about this because I respect you so much. I'm like, anytime, anytime I get a piece of information from you, I always think like, I should have thought of that. Well, I, I'm, I, I'm supposed to be good too. Why can't I think of these cool things? But you mentioned that you're using automation in a unique way. And I was thinking like, how do you use automation in a unique way? I, you know, I, I think one of the things that fascinated me uh, quite a number of years ago uh, was a few of uh, a few of my my young uh, colleagues uh, um, and and you know our writers producers using logic or mm -hmm. using tools or or digital performer or whatever they're whatever they're into and you know they've got a low budget mm -hmm. and and they're working either off their laptop or mm -hmm. off you know my second hand uh, uh, G5. Or Question, mm -hmm. who doesn't have a low budget now? <laughs> <laughs> Very good point. And hence, hence why I've migrated into, uh, into a, 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 a hybrid form of automation. But, yeah. but, but to be brief, uh, you know, they, they, they'll grab any knob and automate it. Will I am was actually one of the guys who, who turned me on as well. Mm -hmm. Because, he, you know, he he instantiates a plugin and has the option to to automate everything on that plugin mm -hmm. whereas the rest of us uh, you know mm -hmm. uh, engineer types will make sure that none of those options are on so that in case we want to change a parameter on the fly, on the fly we, we're not you know mm -hmm. uh, dealing with automation mm -hmm. but he he's just always automating he's always in his head automating and I did um, a lot of records with Will and, and Will is would, wouldn't you say Will symbolizes and is and is the, the the poster child for the new breed of producer? He's absolutely. He uh, combined with Dylan Dresdo, Will um, Will uses production as Will uses mix te techniques as part of production. Absolutely. Which is which is the new model, I would think. Yeah. You think? He thinks about it in his head that way. He comes in with an idea and a concept that's based around the engineering of it. A quick footnote, mm -hmm. you still need us though, <laughs> even with those techniques. Okay, go ahead. Um, but he, he, I think the, it, 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 you know, people like Will and some of the, these, these younger producer, engineer type people, um, as I said, the, the, the way that they approach automation is, is part of their whole technique, mm -hmm. where we're, we were thinking, I've got to come up with a cool effect for this section. He's like, I'll, I'll, I'll automate the effect mm -hmm. in that section so that it goes right back to where I had it for the verse or mm -hmm. for that line in the verse. He'll change the effect for one line. You know what? I was we, wondering when you were going to chime in. That's the quietest I've seen you, my friend. Well, there was a lot of information being imparted. I thought you're it was not pretty gonna cool. Be, you're not going to be a mixer after this series, are you? I actually have a mix schedule in about an hour. <laughs> 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 but here's what we should do, because we have such great guests and such great information. Why don't we bring in our guys in the corner office? Zan, oh, you yeah. got some stuff over there? I've got a bunch. But uh, before we get into that, I'd love to read this quote from 111 ENT. 
He says, this is like watching Batman and Superman in the same room. Two of my favorite superheroes. So I just thought that was really cool. Well, that uh, what, what, was it, what was his number? <laughs> what was his name? 111 ENT, as an entertainment okay, actually, so what you I actually, I actually know who that is, but uh, A111, who's Batman, who's Superman? <laughs> well, and I, thought I might not continue this show. <laughs> well, and I've got a fragile ego. I, here, I got left out, so I don't know what you feel bad about. <laughs> Zan, what, what you got for us? Uh, this I've got one from Milturn. Um, what are your thoughts on placing the bass in the mix? For who? For, for both of you guys, okay. for a Tony and Dave. I say mute the damn thing. It's just too much trouble to deal with. Next. <laughs> Milturn, um, Great question. We could do three shows on that. Yesterday I was mixing a song, um, and you know what? I'm going to answer this differently, because I want Tony to chime in on this. I look at, the first thing I look at is there's a war, and in my mind I visualize a war going on below 200 cycles, and that war can either be won by the bass or won by the kick drum. Now, I'm exaggerating for effect. In rock, I'm exaggerating. In rock, usually the bass wins that war. In hip hop, the 808, the kick drum wins that war. In pop music, it's an uh, it's it's an open battle that anybody can win. So once you f philosophically look at the problem like that, now you can carve out EQ spaces for each to sit in, and then the lowest part of the frequency spectrum is given to what, whoever wins the war. Now, Tony's going to tell you something that will make sense out of all that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I actually I love that, that description of it, I think, and, and it's completely appropriate as well. Um, the only thing I'd add to it is um, it changes, first of all, ballad, mid-tempo, up-tempo. So you even subdivide the... Oh, heck yeah. The, I mean, the... the, the um, the battle changes of who, who wins and how they win mm -hmm. um, um, because, you know, of course, in a ballad, uh, it's all about the low end, mm -hmm. you know. Um, I never so, thought of it that way. And, but, and, like, and all my life, I remember maybe intuitively I do do, I do that. Oh, you do. I do? Oh, you do. <laughs> Is there anything yeah, else yeah. you got? You got, some yeah, other, yeah. got some other good stuff? Let's get to some yep. questions. Dave Swanson wants to know, what's the relationship between compression and automation? Which approach is better for vocals or instruments? Like, just how you go about it. Uh, sorry, say the first part of that again? I, I think I understand what he's trying to say is, if you're going to achieve something, to co like compression or automation, you can, you can uh, achieve... You're trying to level out vocals when exactly. you compress them or do you have automate a, the levels. A preferred approach, like do you go with automation to get your levels in or compression to keep them... Uh, me? Yeah. Her? Yeah. <laughs> 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 you want to take a shot at it? I, I, I got, I got I an idea. Um, completely unique. Go ahead, I'll talk. Uh, well, uh, I mean, I, I, I like a fader. I, I ride a fader. I'm, I'm on it all okay. day. Okay. I, I spent a lot of time on a fader, and 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 uh, okay. um, I, I use compression a lot. I actually ride my my squashed vocal in as well, mm -hmm. it, in for effect in mm -hmm. places. Mm -hmm. But I've got I've got my faders moving. What's your go-to compressor uh, analog for vocals? Um, go-to compressor analog ballad eleven seventy six. Go to compressor pop, probably the at the moment the Chandler uh, Zener mm -hmm. and the uh, and the uh, distressor analog. That's, that's a, you, uh, when you come back and visit us next time, I, I want to delve into the different compressors for different vocals for different genres. That's freaking me out, Tony. <laughs> And, and I spend it. a lot of time in in the different camps in different uh, genres. So uh, I'm, I've got you know my make my a note. Then when Tony comes back, I want to I want to find out how he can maneuver so effortlessly between genres. And and plug-in wise, real quick, what do you, what's your what's what's your favorite uh, that you find you use most often? I I spend a lot of time with um, the Maserati plugin. I, I, well, uh, yes. But I, I, I've been using the UAD stuff and mm -hmm. really digging a lot of their, um, their uh, vintage 
uh, I don't know what you call them, emulators or, or you know, re digital versions of. Stuff, uh, really, really digging that stuff. Uh, um, I use the Wave C4 quite a lot. C4. C6 uh, too. I just got the C6, so I'm mm -hmm. not ready to work it in yet. Yeah, I just got it too. Yeah. It's, it's, it's pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, A Boss wants to know what do you start your mixes with? Drums, bass, vocals? Uh, it varies, A Boss. Um, and it varies a lot by mood. It varies for no damn reason at all. I just sometimes, when you do as many mixes as Tonya and I do, sometimes just want to do it different. But I find that 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 my dad once told me when you wake up in the morning um, do all the chores and answer all the phone calls that you hate the most and then by 10 o'clock the rest of your day is easy vocals have always been hard for me even though a lot of people think I'm good at it so lately I've been using my dad's philosophy and addressing those first and I find that by 7, 8 o'clock at night when I need my biggest creativity to do a vocal, it's already done, so I can apply that creativity to something else. So I, I've been doing the vocals first lately. Excuse me. Uh, was it Dylan or Jean Marie? Jean Marie said he starts with the vocals first too, didn't he? Yeah. yeah. I, I I agree with Dave. I I, I actually it it changes, um, but uh, but lately I do spend a lot more time listening to the vocal, understanding what the lyric is about. Understanding the the perspective. Can I put you on the spot real quick. Sure. I love I love what you did on the Mark Anthony song. Did you start with the vocal first on that song? Um, no, mostly because it wasn't done yet. <laughs> <laughs> um, Mark Mark, who of course is an incredible vocalist. Incredible. Um, and, and and what you did too was amazing. Thanks, but he he he's you know never finished, and and so you know up until the last minute he still doing a take or doing something and I'm I gotta go I'm mixing so I'm doing the track and uh, yeah, on Corey the new piece of coal album Zan, Zan helped me with that it was like six in the morning we had to have it at mastering in four hours and we're still getting vocals from Keisha it's, yeah. people don't understand that sometimes what else you got Zan by the way uh, um, uh, A Bus is that that was uh, A Boss yeah A Boss thanks for that question uh, got one from Kobe Swiss A What's going on in your head from the moment you hear the rough mix between that and when you actually get to a mix on the song? Sheer terror. Uh, <laughs> and you're not going to believe this, but I doubt that I can beat the rough mix every time I sit down. And I know that sounds like I'm making that up, but I fall in love with the rough mix now. It's, rough mixes 10 years ago were useless. Now, mm -hmm. as we said earlier, pr pr Mixing used to be added to the production 10 years ago. Now mixing completes the production because mixing is part of the production. So rough mixes are an insight into what the producer was thinking and have to be considered and looked at. And I always find great ideas in the rough mixes. In fact, I, I, I'm trying to make an effort to not use the R word. I'm trying to make an effort to call them reference mixes rather than rough mixes because that's what they are now. I agree. Tom? Completely. That's exactly how I feel and how it's been working. Colby, thanks. What's up? Um, I've got a question for Tony from Anders High House. Uh, he wants to know what your approach is to the mix bus. How do you approach the mix bus? Ah. Um, That's a show. <clears throat> well, I, uh, I, don't, uh, I don't maximize uh, to tape or whatever you want to call it, to my print. I don't send the mastering engineer uh, a maximized... Uh, file, um, but I do sometimes use a little bit of uh, limiting uh, by way of a Pendulum uh, ES8 uh, comp limiter. I like a lot of their gear. Yeah, um, I, and I'll I'll use um, I'll use uh, Slate Digital has a um, a new uh, digital you know uh, plug-in. We talked about that on yeah. our very first show. Yeah, some uh, uh, does great. Bus compression, uh, and I and I do s send a loud version to the producer, or the label to listen to, and I use a slate to do that. Cool. Um, so, ditto. Uh, Matt in the UK wants to know how do you pan vocal stacks? Like, how do you approach? Matt, love the UK, love you, Matt. Thanks for calling in again. Um, I'm gonna go old school on you, Matt. 
15 years ago, 10 years ago, never had to worry about it because I got a stereo track of all the background vocals. Now I get about 600 tracks of vocals routinely. <laughs> Only on those mixes that I have to start at 8 at night and have to be finished by midnight, it seems like. Um, what I try to do is just, and I, I know you're not going to want this answer, but I just try to be creative with what I'm given. And by creative, one of the reasons I like to have the vocals split out is I'll take the higher harmonies and I'll, I'll run those louder towards the end of the song in the vamp and lower in the beginning. In the beginning, I'll emphasize some of the lower harmonies and that gives my track a, a little chance to build. And then I tend to like the, the, the high information panned a little more in and the lower harmonies panned a little more out. Now, I've got friends that make better records than me that do the opposite. So my point earlier <coughs> about it being a taste thing, that's what I kind of try to do. Back when I was doing Brian McKnight's uh, mixes with, with all those hits that we had, Brian would do uh, three tracks, top to bottom, uh, basically root third, fifth, and he'd mix that up. And then he'd do a fourth track that he would just go all over the place. And it would vary from the first chorus to the last chorus. And that was pretty exciting to deal with because I've never heard anybody do that concept before where, where early on he's doing lower notes and the second chorus he's doing some higher notes. And then Brian's gift for harmonic structure was beyond most people's ability. And yeah. he would get into some really interesting things. What's, what's your take, Tony? Well, <clears throat> excuse me, um, you know, in, in chatting with you over the years, I remember there was something that stuck with me that, that you talked about a lot, was um, you'll, you'll often, uh, first of all, you, you won't, um, you, you, I, I can't, I'm trying to remember the exact way you me put too. it. Me too, yeah, I'm and, excited. But, uh, tell me, tell me. You, you, won't, you won't use... Um, um, you know, if you get a, a stereo piano, you won't use it as a stereo exactly, piano. Yeah. You'll focus w part of the energy on one side and you'll change the energy and focus it on the other. And, and you explained it in ways of, of doing with reverbs and mm -hmm. with, with harmony parts mm -hmm. and with the reverbs on them. Mm -hmm. and, and, I, and I don't know that I've ever actually grasped what you were saying, but I've formulated my own way I've of I've made a career messing. out of that, by the way, yeah. not grasping what I'm saying. <laughs> but I've formulated my own way of mm -hmm. interpreting Good. what you did and, and tried to come up with interesting ways of panning my vocals and, and affecting them so that is they... There, is, uh, is there a song that, that, um, that Matt can listen to that, that mm. might give an example? I... I, I I can't say there is. I, I, th I think that some of the stuff I did on, uh, there was a record by an artist named Liz Wright that uh, Craig Street produced that I, I mixed and I did a lot of that. I used, I used, um, I used a distortion, an analog distortion box that I have and, and sort of sent, you know, had the dry signal on one side and, and the just roughed up uh, other, oh, you know, I, I sent the, the, you know, sent it into a distortion pedal, brought it up a little bit on the other side, and then I sometimes would mess with that depending on the harmony parts. Mm -hmm. um, but this, uh, cool. yeah, I have a question actually. Yeah. The the mastering process for both you guys, mm -hmm. critical process. Do you have favorites? Do you have favorite engineers? Fa yeah, for mastering. Absolutely. What about, yeah? yeah. Yeah. Like like whom? Go ahead, Tom. And whom and why actually? Mm. Um, I, 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 uh, I use Herb Powers a lot, um, a guy out of New York that I, that I knew, uh, I, since my, the beginning of my career, mm. actually, and, um, and, uh, his, uh, protege, uh, Dave Kutch, mm. also, uh, I use him all the time. Is that the guy Manny uses? Yes, as a matter of fact. Uh, did Alicia's record, um, just did a record for me. Um, uh, he does a great job utilizing uh, digital gear and analog gear mm -hmm. quite, quite nicely. And is trust part of it? That you know when it goes over to those hands, mm -hmm. it's going to keep the ethos that you put in your mix and get the results that you want. It, there's got to be something. Absolutely. It's, yeah. it's trust. It's, it's also communication. Yeah, yeah. I know I can say these two sentences and he's going to understand what I'm saying. Precisely. And not completely break down the whole thing, but just grab the things that we're talking about. Same, same true for you? 
Oh, yeah, yeah. If Tony said it was true for me. Uh, I, I also like her powers a lot. Whenever I hear, uh, whenever I think of her powers, I think of I want to be down Brandy. That was just a yeah. seminal. Is yeah. that the right word, Herb? It's very good. You are a working, walking dictionary. Seminal. We're going to work yeah, on genre later. Okay. I like, I, 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 a new person I've just found, Tony, is uh, Brad Blackwood in Memphis. He's doing some, Okay. I won't say under the radar, but he's he's really, really, really good. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Eddie Schreier I like a lot. I like uh, um, Big Bass Brian and Chris over it and, and Bernie yeah. over at Bernie Grumman. Sure. I, like, I like Tom Coyne, Chris G. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Ted over yeah. at Sterling. Those are our guys, you know. Yeah. And yeah. um, um, to, to answer part of your question, I mix with mastering in mind, mm -hmm. not necessarily positively in mind. Sometimes I mix with mastering negatively in mind. If you play defense, and uh, this is um, this is uh, this is a complete off the subject uh, answer, but a lot of times having a relationship with your mastering engineer or someone that masters for you. I, I have standing orders with all the guys I master with. Uh, when I send you something, please send me a critique of, of what I'm doing so I can get better. Um, and then also, I, I ask them, if you've heard anything recently that sounds way better than me, let me know about it so I can hear it and see what I'm doing wrong or need to catch up with. So mastering is also a good source to to, to kind of check your new room, see if, if you're okay there, have yeah. them tell you, okay, look, you're hearing too much of this and that. And then Tony mentioned earlier about uh, things he put on the, on the stereo bus, and uh, there's a big war right now, Herb, between mastering engineers and, and recording engineers about do we let them do that, mm -hmm. or and like there's guys like Alex the Kid, there's a lot of people out there, producers that that manipulate the stereo bus as part of the production process. Mm -hmm. And when you remove that, you remove a part of their production. I mean, it, it becomes turf protection, doesn't it, in some ways? In a way, but now, now it's part of the sound. Right, right. And particularly plugins like, uh, like L2, the sure. sound plugins. And so the big battle right now is do you send it with that on to mastering and, 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 and have them cuss you pretty much? Right. Or do you take it off and hope they beat it? Right, 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 right. right, uh, right. I'm, I'm not going to tell who because uh, I, I, I'm, I'm sworn to secrecy and he'll kick my ass. But uh, a close friend it. of mine just had that dilemma. He sent a record off it, which, which is a, a major selling record. And the instructions from the artist were, I want it to sound just like this. And the mastering guy removed all the stuff on the stereo bus and then didn't proceed to beat it. and. Yeah. The engineer gets in trouble for that. Yeah. You got uh, time for one more question? No, no, no. T tease something up. Right in, right it. in. Send your letters to Andrea and Will <laughs> and beg for more time, please. And send one to Tony. <laughs> okay. Uh, Bass in the chat room wants to know for hip hop or R&B, do you use reverb on drums or not? Malts also, or do you use none to keep them in your face kind of approach? Great question. Great question. Um, I, I actually, it depends on the song. Genre. It really does. It depends yeah. on the song. I mean, uh, this question is referring to hip hop and R&B, right. and I, and I and I have to say, it depends on the song. It depends on uh, uh, the tempo. It depends on who it is. One of the things I learned by studying your records is, um, you've got a pan knob to pan left and right. Think of reverb as your pan knob to to pan front to rear. Yes. And then within that framework, think of your early reflections as a way to pan the reverb front to rear. So we've got two controls over the placement front to rear in a mix. That's right. And, and what I learned from your records is when you want the kick and snare to be in your face, reverb defeats the purpose. Mm -hmm. And then when you want stuff to sit layered, like you want the drums to sit right behind the singer in a, in a ballad or something, you can create... And like one of the things I like about your mixes is that you mix as if you're facing the stage. I noticed a lot. I do, and yeah. and 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 uh, and I, I do too. That's why I like it. <laughs> and so reverb can help you can help you create that depth of a live band. You can put the drummer behind the singer. You can put yeah. you know, things out to the side. Uh, beats. I hope that answers your question. If if not, let me know. And we'll do a uh, we'll do an into the layer on that for you. 
And, and also, you know, keep in mind that as you send your questions, send them through the week, we'll get back to you, we'll get back with some information. We can get back to you during next week's show. So don't stop because the show goes over. And speaking of that, you know, you can always email us at pensadoplacethisweekend.com. You can hit our Twitter handle. Go to the YouTube channel. There's lots of ways to get to us because we want to stay in touch with you, and your comments are, are so helpful. And from Rhode Island to, to North Hollywood. Yeah. Congratulations to Thanks very Thank much. you for being our guest, too. Man. It was really, it's been a pleasure. Really, really, really cool. We're yeah. big fans of your work. What do you think, Dave? Man, I tell you what, um, this is just too much fun. I really appreciate you guys giving us the opportunity to to uh, bring this show to you. And uh, as I've said a number of times, we don't take that responsibility lightly. We hear what you're asking us to do. I read all the uh, comments and suggestions. We do have limitations, but we're trying little by little to implement everything that you're asking us to do. And keep those keep those coming and uh, I want to once again from the bottom of my heart thank Mr. Maserati for, for hanging with us Tony. and if, if enough of you guys let us know we'll have Tony back real soon in future shows uh, I've talked with Manny American Manny has committed to uh, helping us out in a week or two Jack Joseph Puig has said he'll help us out and numerous other friends of mine that that are willing to share some of what they've learned with you so uh, let us know what you want Tell your friends, let's, let's get this thing uh, really taken off and we can bring you all the information you need. Thanks a lot. We'll see you next week.